Well, hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. We're just going to go for a little walk about, aren't we? Yeah. I'm going to see what we can find in the rock pools. I've got my little prawn net. I've got a bucket. You can just see the tides ebbing off. See that seagull in the background there? He's already had. He's already got what looks like a short spine sea scorpion in his mouth. So you can see down in the way there. There's a couple of turnstones, a cormorant. I don't know how far you can see, but there's. Now we're just going to work our way along. Just as the tide's ebbing off, down in all the rocks and the seaweed there, and we'll see see if we can find anything. Every now and then, in amongst all the shingle, there are little outcrops of rock like this. And if you turn the seaweed up, you can see we've got little little yellow periwinkles. If you turn the seaweed over, sometimes under these, there are little hidey holes. There's a couple of big limpets there. It's in these, these little crevices and these little hidey holes where you will find there's a little furrowed crab. That's actually called a furrowed crab. There's a worm cast. So yeah, as, as the tide ebbs off a bit and we get further out, we'll be able to get to some decent rocks out there. You can see we've come up to like another bit of an outcrop of rock running down like that. And this is what we'll work along. So all you do is you turn the seaweed back. There yeah, look, there's a nice mussel. That is a decent sized mussel that. You see we've just picked up a couple of three decent cockles as well. Hannah and James have found a few nice ones. There's another mussel. All we're looking for, as you turn them over, is... That's a dead one. Oh look, there is a little pipe fish. Just looks like a piece of seaweed, but that's actually a fish. It's a pipe fish. Get you hidden back under the seaweed and go under there. No, oh. ha! That don't even know if that scallop's still alive. What's happened there is a piece of seaweed's attached to the top of it and obviously when the, when the weather's come bad and it's pulled the seaweed away it's taken the scallop with it. Have a look. Looks like it's still alive. Really small that one. Perfect little queenie scallop. It's actually, uh, sorry I say queenie, it's a king scallop. It's just a small one. Which, I don't know if the colour comes out now, it's lovely and pink. Get this one put back in the water. See what it does. That might still be alive, that. Now that we've taken that hitchhiker off its back, leave that there. But right, that's all we're doing, we're just... You look for like the little outcrops like this. Because they tend to hide up along the sides of them. Here look, there's a little oyster. There's two types of oysters around in my area. This is the native type. And there is an invasive type, which is a Pacific oyster. I'll show you some of them. The local ones, the native ones, are generally in the sand or like, attached to a single rock like this. The invasive ones make like their own beds and they, they hang onto the sides of rocks. If I can find one, I'll show you one. But, um, yeah, that's, that's a native oyster. There's another oyster. That actually is a decent size. That's, that's a capable size, that one. There's a, a, better, a better example of a native oyster. Back that. Tuck that one under there. Keep it out of the way. Just turn this seaweed over and there is a collection of some really nice mussels. 
Got some really good ones there. Just take a couple of a couple of them, leave the other ones. You see these strings here, like these little stalks? It comes out of around there in the muscle. And it's how they hang onto the rock. It's how they anchor themselves like that. There you go, there's a couple of nice mussels. These seaweeds, I always find them really interesting. That's how it hangs onto the rock like that, like an anchor. Yeah, it's just, there's another one, some little periwinkles. All we're doing is just turning, turning the seaweed over. Oh, and there, there look. All oh, right, well this is something I can tell you about. That there is a shore crab. And if you can see underneath it, see there's a little one hiding underneath it. The one underneath it will be a peeler crab. Now let me see. And that one there, that small one, uh, is soft. And they were actually mating. Look, that one's a male, that one's a female. That'll be the old shell from this one. So they'll mate while she's soft and he'll protect her. Took them back under there. Leave them to carry on what they were doing. He'll be fuming now. <laughs> what we're looking for is we're looking for like a big hole under these where you can get like big crabs and lobsters hiding. There is there is a spot just further down, just further down the way there, that I know that often holds one. So we'll work our way down there. I want to flip that rock out of the way. You want to flip that rock out of the way? Okay, go on then. Be careful. Good job. What are you finding, James? Um, some mussels. You're looking for some mussels? What is it? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, now just stunned found something. What's he found? Now let's go around this way. <gasps> Look what Dad's got. Big dog, what I am. Big crab. Was that an edible one? An edible one. Oh, yeah. Oh, we were coming. Just hiding down here. Whoa. All it was, was I was just turning these rocks over, and if you can see that little hole there, where it was in, it was just kind of tucked down inside that hole. All it was, was there was a little rock over it like that. And I just turned the rock over and there he was, sat in there, sort of sucked right in. You know, like I'd said, the thing that I'd saw, was if you can see this here, it had turned all this out. So I kind of thought, oh, that'll be there. And it was there. A nice little male edible crab. Go and get more stuff. One of the things that we're looking for, if you can see there, is like a little cave. You see that? Because crabs and lobsters will hide up in there. I mean, this one here, I don't know if you can see it right up the back of there. There is a little tiny edible crab. But that's what we're looking for. If you can just see, look, it's just like a little cave. That's what we're looking for. Here I can show you the comparison. You know, I said earlier, this is a native oyster. That is an invasive Pacific oyster. There's another one there, look. See the difference? That's a native one there in hand, and that's an invasive one. And you will find them on outcrops of rocks like this. You all right up there? Yeah. You all right? This is quite interesting. You see these? They aren't grapes, they aren't berries, those are eggs. Can't remember if they're, if they're cuttlefish eggs or if they're... I've seen them before. Yeah, we'll just tuck them under there. This patch of open rock that we've come to it's full of winkles. Now you can take these, these are a little bit small. You can pick out the better ones. I um, I, I only ever take them if they'll be about that big. Not doing too badly so far. Got some nice mussels, a couple of cockles. 
up in a nice edible crab. You see in all these rocks, there are quite a lot of these. I've taken a bit of a tumble look. There are these invasive Pacific oysters you can see them around the place. And these, these are the native ones, and these are the invasive ones. See the difference in them, can't you? If you find a flat rock like this on here, just if you flick it over. Oh, look, here's a couple of different things I can show you. These are periwinkles, the white ones here, those are called dog whelks. If you can see here, look, there is actually a cushion star hiding under this. See that there, look? The little edible crab. That's a baby version of the one we've just found. And underneath this one here, these are really fast. That is a velvet swimming crab. In miniature version. You can see they've got red eyes and bright blue bits on their claws. When they get adult size, they're about, about that big. And their meat is very sweet. Oh, there's a shore crab as well. Let's put that rock back down. Cover them back up. That there is an example of why you need to be careful. All I was doing was I was walking over the rocks and I stood on a piece of rock and seaweed like that and slipped and put my hand down and those scratches there are the barnacles. Got one. Got one. <laughs> I've got the lobster under this hole here. <laughs> this is the hole that I was talking about. I just can't get it out. This is why I've, I've brought this do you, you, you want me to come down? Bit closer and you can just stand. Okay. Right. But this rock here goes underneath and there's like a hollow there and there is usually like a big crab or a lobster. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just there and what it's done is it's got itself wedged in there and I can't get my hand in behind the, behind the claws to be able to get it out. Which is why I brought this. I don't know if you can just to say, oh, see the claws I there. <laughs> I can see it. If you can get your antenna thing. Quite often if you can get your hand in behind you. You can Ooh, yeah, we'll have There we go. I can Got see it. it's clear. There you go. Like that. That's the air. <laughs> it took it took a lot to get it out now. I've been trying to get it out for like past 10 minutes. Perfect. Female lobster. You check the tail fans to make sure there's no notches in them. Check the underside, make sure there's no eggs. What a beauty. <laughs> that little honey spot there never fails. It's always got something. It's either got a crab or a lobster in it. Right there. Incredible, aren't they? There is a legal landing size and it's 90 millimetres in my area. It's 90 millimetres from the back of the eye to that part there. I'll get me. Oh, what a beauty. What a belter. It's almost worth, almost worth cutting my finger open for. I can show you that, that hole now, look. It's just kind of like a little cave just up in there. And all I did when I come past and had a look and I pulled, this seaweed was all over it. And all there was was one of its red tentacles poking out so I knew it was there. So all it was, I scraped all the mud and the little stones out of the way with me. Like these stones out of the way. With my, uh, with my little hook. That's all I needed. 
just a little hook like that and you just put that in there I'll show you now you just put it in and like play around with its claws so it closes its claws up on the wire and then you just put your hand in underneath and turn it like that perfect you do the same with these guys you can get one of them to bite hold of it like that look see how strong they are not letting go of that is it look that's why I bring a hook with me Yeah, he's woke up a bit now, he's got something to get hold of. Aye, so it's much better to use one of these than to use your hands. If you can get that in there and get him to grab hold of it, he's, he's preoccupied, so you can generally get him out there. But when I looked, it was just one of these, one of these antennas was sticking out. I've just turned this little rock over here and it's just gone mad, they've just run everywhere. Look, there is a little furrowed crab. See how strong they are, look at that rock is lifting up. I always think they look like uh, like they've been rubbed around in the rocks, look. I turn this over. I don't know if you can see there. See that little fish? There was a little shore rockling. It's like a little catfish. Well, there it goes. But this is the main guy that I'm looking for. You see him there? Now that is a velvet swimming crab and they are angry as soon as you go anywhere near them look see how aggressive he is they are mad aggressive you saw the other one I pick up that edible crab it's half docile these things really will go for you look so what you need to do is if you can get him to get him to go like that then get on top of him you see how I got him to I got him to go forward and grab and then as his pinches were out, I pressed down on the top of his head. Once you've got him there, you've got him. And as with the other ones, the safest place to hold them is there. Grab hold of them between your thumb and your finger there, and they can't get you. But he's got some right claws on him. Bright red eyes, blue markings. And these legs, these paddle legs, he uses to swim, which is where it gets its name from. A velvet swimming crab. There was, uh, there's all sorts, I'll just, just hold him with my boot. There's all sorts in here, there's a prawn. Can you see it jumping? And there's a couple of little fish, just around, up in here, little rocklings. That there. There's another little piped fish. There's loads in that little bit of a rock pole. Let's cover this back up. But yeah, we might, we might take him for the pot as well. Only problem with these is they're just that aggressive, you struggle to put them in a bucket with anything else, which will just go mad. I call that a definite success. Let's go and get the stove. We're going to come to the cooking now. All we have is we just have a little tiny camping stove that just runs on, um, on little gas bottles. Now, we've got our Forage in there, we've got our lobsters and our crabs. Fantastic that we've managed to find these. There's your lobster. When we're cooking these at home, you okay? Yeah. Do you want to stroke him? Oh, yeah. Good lad. When we're cooking these at home, generally what we do is just before we're going to cook them, is we'll put them in the freezer for 10 or 15 minutes. And that, that drop in temperature there puts them right to sleep. Uh, of course we can't do that here now. One of the other methods that you can use is if you take a knife, it's got, if you can see, it's got a line, so it makes like a plus sign. If you take a knife and you push it down into there, that'll incapacitate it. So you dispatch the lobster before you put it into the boiling water. Now we're quite lucky. This is our usual, this is our usual cooking pot. And it just, just fits in there. We might have to start bringing a bigger pan with us. The same cooking them now as we would do when we're cooking them at home. Just very simple. All we'll do is get some clean salty water and bring it to the full rolling boil. Put your crab or your lobster in there and when it's fully rolling boiling again, two more minutes after that and it's done. That's how easy it is, that's how simple it is, nothing else. We'll, um, we'll cook the lobster first because it's going to take slightly longer and then we'll cook the crabs and the shells. While we're waiting for the, for the water to boil for the lobster, deal with these crabs. See I'm having a scrap in there. 
I think this velvet this velvet swing crab is made to match with that guy. I'll try and separate these two. Those are wick. Let's see, I'll deal with him first. I said before the easiest way to pick these up is like that round the back. They are covered in spikes along there and they are very fast. Now the easiest way to kill these is if you pull this pull the flap down and just push the knife in there like that. There, that's him done. He's ready for the pan. See look he's, he's gone. There will be a little tiny bit of like nerve movement in there but he is gone. There. Now with these they are slightly bigger so you, if you had a screwdriver you could do that but this shell's a bit too tough. There's a different way of doing these as well to get it in the pan. If we were doing these at home I would boil the whole thing and take quite a bit of time to take out the brown meat that's inside the shell. But all you need to do is if you take hold of it find the corner of a rock like this and you hit it there and that hard hit just completely knocks it out it, it incapacitates it and then all you do is take the back off and you break it into two parts watch your fingers as well <laughs> and then you just peel the back off in fact I'll do it over here so I don't get any juice where I'm wet Just like this. There. Now inside of there, you can see the bits of guts. That's inside of its stomach, its heart. Those white bits there is actually its male organs. You can see some of it here, look. That's all its heart and guts and... It's gone. It's dead now. Take the face plates off. These parts here is gills, also called dead man's fingers they can come off and this goop here which is the insides of what it's been eating and bits just wash that out in a bit of water so I'll take off the dead man's fingers and then I'm just going to break this right in half there go and wash it out in a rock pool there. all that's full of meat, all the legs are full of meat and this side's full of meat and they're to be cooked like that the pan has come to the full rolling boil now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this lobster out and then we're going to put it in the pan, aren't we? Yeah. We'll get a nice towel on. We've got, uh, I won that towel from a competition and it's, uh, it's my fishing towel but it also works as my foraging towel as well. So, um, thank you. Just take your knife, go straight in there. Yeah. Roger's coming out, Dad. Uh-oh. Roger's coming out. Uh-oh. Roger was coming out. Get her all in there. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the water now. Yeah. You can see it's stopped the rolling boil. That's because the lobster has cooled down the rest of the water. So if you're cooking a big lobster, that method still works because it just takes longer for the water to come to the rolling boil again. So it's a rolling boil, put the lobster in. When it comes to a rolling boil again, two more minutes and it's done. You can see there how the lobster's fully turned colour. It's at the rolling boil again now. So two more minutes and that's ready to come out. We're getting a bit of side wind on the stove, which is why I've hidden it behind this rock. Oh, chain. Yeah, we're doing all right. There we are. That's that's had two more minutes now. So I'll, you can see there, it's properly changed colour. It's all ready to come out. Now, if I was doing this at home, what I would do is I would put it straight into ice water. Put it straight into a bowl of ice water, which cools down the cooking process so it doesn't keep cooking and just become overcooked. Um, because we don't have that here now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to sit it up there in the wind and hopefully that will cool it down quick enough. But in the meantime, while that's cooling, I think, uh, my wife's going to cook these, these crabs and these shells. Change this water out, get some nice clean fresh water, and we'll get that to the boil. Okay, we're going to cook up the crabs now. So we've got the parts of the edible crab and we've got the velvet crab that's just going to go in whole. They should all fit in together and they should take about the same amount of time to cook. So the water is a rolling boil, same as with the lobster. 
wait for it to get to a rolling boil, put the shellfish in, the water will drop back down, wait for it to come back to the boil and just give it a little bit of time after that. So again, it's clean, salty water. See that, so it stopped boiling, lid on. We'll wait for that to come back up to the boil. So they're well back to a rolling boil now, so we'll just give them a little minute longer and they will be all good to come out. Crab's just finishing off, so we're gonna get this prepped to go in. Uh, with the mussels, we'll just try and like knock off the worst of the barnacles off the shell, just to clean them up a little bit. I mean, we're not serving them in a fine dining restaurant, but. And then this one hasn't got one, but they have, we call them, I call them beards. So these bits where they were attached to the rock. So I just pull those off. So we'll just de-beard them, get the barnacles off. And I'm just gonna put them in the water that the crab's been cooking in. I am gonna add a little bit of garlic and lemon to the water, just because crab and lobster don't need any flavors adding to it. But sometimes it's nice to have something extra in shellfish. Okay, these are good to come out. There's the claws of the edible crab. This was Mr. Violent Velvet. The last of his fighting days. He's done. There we go. There we are, we'll just... So, just leave those there to cool down. Uh, right, I'm going to stick in a bit of lazy garlic because I'm lazy. That smells so strong. Right, so if we were doing the shellfish at home, we would have left these overnight in clean salty water just to purge themselves. So these have just had like a little swill while we've been doing this. So they're dropped straight in. You know when shellfish are ready because they open. If they don't, if they don't open, don't eat them. Don't force them open to eat them. It means they're not good. So we'll pop the lid on those, let them do their thing. Right, these are just starting to open, so before they're completely ready, I'm just going to add in a whiz of lemon. I mean, some of those are already open. So these are going to be plenty ready. So, as soon as you took that lid off there, there was just a waft of lemon. <laughs> it smells, smells like delicious, garlic. doesn't it? <laughs> Here we go, so the mussels are all good. Here's the cockles. I'll just get a couple of each out. Oh, he's come out of his shell. Pop them in there. And that's a nice big one. There you go. How simple was that? We got edible crab, cockles, mussels, velvet swimming crab, and lobster. All cooked very simply and all well the smell is, is amazing I, I can't wait to get stuck into these 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 cockles and mussels you can just eat them straight out of the shell just like that oh. the crabs I'll, I'll show you how to break those parts up the yam um, okay. take the claws off this velvet first Every little section of this has got meat in there. You just find yourself a little rock. If you take, if you take the end section of one of the crab's legs, it works as a perfect little pick to pick the meat out. Thank you. Now. I've always found I've always found velvet swimming crab meat to be quite sweet. Sweeter than edible crab. I've never actually tried it. 
Nice. Do you want some of this? James, do you want some of this? I don't. I don't have I don't think he does. He did just eat before we come out. So I'm not really surprised. There, look. That little crab claw there. That is all meat. All. I pinched that off you. Sorry. Do you want some butter? No, I'm alright. I just. I want butter on the lobster. I just like him. Um, I just like a bit of lemon juice. Crab claws will have a hard cartilage disc in it like that. Other than that. Oh. Same there, if you just break the claw off, just find yourself something to break it with. If you put it between two rocks, just give it a knock. All I do is give it a knock around. And what it should do is it should break right across the middle. And it just comes straight out of its shell. Get you a little pick. Get yourself out. Exactly the same with the lobster claws. I'll show you how to break into the lobster tail in a minute. Lobster claws, exactly the same. I prefer this. The velvet crab was nice, but I prefer this. I'm trying to be gentle when I break it so I don't splatter it everywhere. Now look, if you can just be careful when you do it, it all stays in one piece, but now look, that's all just prime lobster meat. It's just delicious. Now that was them. Um, it's one of the things you might notice. You might not know about lobsters. But usually, you might have noticed they've got one big claw and one little claw. It's got one with like a real strong side and one with a little serrated side. And that's because it's got a cruncher and a cutter. And it'll get hold of something and then with the other one, it'll cut it up. That's why they've got two different types of claw. Probably should have put the butter on it when it was hot, shouldn't I? No, we're waiting for it to cool down. <laughs> now look, that's all meat there. Do you want some of this or not? Yes, please. Okay. In fact, actually, I'll give you that one. Thanks. What I'll do really quickly is I'll, I'll show you how to get into the tail. This is, this is my method anyway. James, can I have my towel, please? Hi. Thank you. Come here. All you need to do is break the tail off like that. And it comes out. Right, that inside of there, if you can scoop that out. That Let me help you. That's just part of it. Why did I just People do that? eat that. I find, it, I find it often it's got a little bit Why of grit in it. Once you've taken the tail off like that, if you take hold of the tail fans, turn them side to side, the end will come off like that. Do you want some of it, James? You then want to lay, some, lay it down flat. I'm just going to pick this rock. Actually, can you just guide that camera in so that you can see, see what I'm doing? Right, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my towel and you lay it on its side and press it down and you'll hear it crack like that so it's cracked it all the way along there and now what you do is you open it out so it's laid flat like that and then press down on it again Did you hear that crack <laughs> you heard that didn't you yeah and that way it's so loud Dana. it should peel off Whoa. Perfectly. There's loads like of that. paint inside. There's that loads is the easiest way to get the tail out. There's loads of paint inside. There Dad. is loads of pink inside. What you need to make sure of is here. There is an intestine line that runs up the back of that. So if you get hold of the top two flaps are there and pull it back. Well, you can see. There's that a little bump. tube inside of there. Yeah, There's that, a bump. It does. That goes to its bum. <laughs> That's its intestine line there, so you want to pull that out. Because that's, well, just that goes to its bum. Yeah, you're right, James. James. What do you want to do? You want to do crabs and lobster? No. So, and lobster. So, and lobster. Do you want to do shells and lobster? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I want to do some... Can I have some lemon, please? Thanks. 
I'm going to go south first. There really is nothing better than this. You do not get any fresh air. You saw it literally come out of the water, which you can't do this every day. You can't do this every tide. You need to. Oh, be careful. You're going to sit down. Good lad. Cooking. You're cooking, are you? You can't do this on every tide. It has to be big tides. Oh, you just calm down a minute. You can't do it on every tide. You need the bigger tides to be able to get out further. When the when it's a bigger tide, the tide goes out further. So you need to you need those. Those are better for foraging. But yeah, you. It does not get any better. You put some butter on there, do you? I don't think I would have anything else. I definitely wouldn't add anything to crab or lobster. Mussels are nice in wine and cream. With warm yeah, well, bread. There's enough oysters and things around here if you're gonna if you're gonna just go and forage a lot of shells, like um, cockles, winkles, mussels, could very very easily make a nice meal just a, a bit of white wine. Or... There's so many oysters, but I just I don't like them. I'm not a fan of them either. You know what? Ah, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Um, I hope it's given you some ideas of, of what's possible. Just going around and foraging on your local seashore. Um, as I've, as I hope I've shown, if you just, um, just keep your eyes open and just look around. There was, there were several things that we found today that um, that we could have taken that we didn't take. Some because they were too small, some because, um, some because, like in the area, our local area, the native oysters, they aren't, uh, they aren't doing very well. There aren't as many of them as they used to be. So uh, when there are other things to take, we will take them instead. Can I tell you all this? Okay, okay, thank you. You got me some butter. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and see you later. You gonna say goodbye? <laughs>